Well, I did a video earlier today talking about how narcissists groom their victims, how narcissists oftentimes want to fashion and shape the person to be the person that they want them to be. Maybe you've seen this in actually trying to modify you, like modify not just what you do, but modify what you wear, modify how you show up, modify how you act in public, modify the things that you say, the things that you do, all these different ways to try to be able to create, to manufacture the perfect partner. This is why a lot of times you'll see narcissists that will go for younger women. I speak from the male's perspective because that is the main place that I can speak from because I'm a male. You see a lot of times narcissists that will go for younger women because they view that younger women are going to be able to be naive enough and be moldable enough to be the person that they need them to be. To be the person that's going to accept a lot of shit because they don't know who they are. They haven't had time to develop the things that are going on in their life to have the life experiences to say, oh, this person is toxic. And the narcissist looks at them and is like, hmm, perfect person that I can train, that I can develop, that I can mold into being the person that I want them to be. For many years, I did this. For many years, I was the person that was trying to mold other people into the version that I wanted them to be. Changing different styles and people over the years, but the whole goal was let me find that perfect person. The ideal version of love. And as a result, I started to do processes, just like we're going to talk about here, of grooming. Of conditioning the people to look a certain way, to act a certain way, to be a certain way. But there's this connection piece that you have to develop really quickly. And a narcissist oftentimes can do that really effectively, especially a covert or a vulnerable narcissist saying, hey, I connect with you. One of the things we talked about earlier was this concept of like connecting in the aspect of having so much in common, of looking alike, of acting, acting very similar, of having some of the same interests and things. We're going to talk about that with two other topics today, and one of them is having the same hopes and dreams, and then number th the, the third one is sharing the same insecurities. And if you guys want to know where we're actually getting this information, it's from Psychopath Free, okay? Recovering from emotionally abusive relationships with narcissists, sociopaths, and other toxic people. And so looking at this first one here, we have the same hopes and dreams. Did it feel like you were with someone that it felt like we are going the exact same way? Like not that we're the exact same person, but like, you want to do this? I want to do this. You're going this direction. I want to go this direction. You want to have that many kids? I want to have that many kids too. All of a sudden, all these pieces start to connect that this person hopes and dreams are exactly the same as yours. It says here, the psychopath will consume your present life, but they will also take over your future. In order to raise the stakes in the relationship, they will begin to make long-term promises. Now, a lot of times we'll refer to this as future faking, of pushing things down the road of saying, hey, this is what I want, this is the direction I'm going, without the resolve to actually do it, without the means to actually do it, without actually coming up and saying like, hey, this is what's going to happen and following through. This practice ensures that you are highly invested in the relationship. After all, who wants to stick around for a romance that has no future? The psychopath takes this a step further, quickly discussing major life events, like, ma like marriage, moving in together, having a baby. These are decisions that typically take years to arrive to in a healthy relationship, but you don't need all that time. You already know you'll be spending the rest of your life with this person. And if you've always dreamed of a family and kids, they will fit that role perfectly. You see, with this concept of future faking, I normally call it one of the three areas that narcissists distort reality. Through gaslighting, love bombing, and future faking. And with future faking, it's this idea of giving you promises, of painting a picture of what could be. Think of it as maybe like producing a hologram of saying like, this is what I'm envisioning, but that's it. Like there's nothing else there. This is the person that promises that they're going to go on a trip and they never go on a trip. This person that promises to get married and it's been seven years and they keep dragging it out. Like this is the person that does all these things saying things are going to happen but never shows any action. Never shows any follow through on the things that are actually happening. And it's no different with this aspect of we have the same hopes and dreams. Like the same ideas, the same thoughts, the same, oh my gosh, we're going the same exact way. Oftentimes, the narcissist will do this to mirror you and to become the perfect partner for you. If you want to start a business, they'll be your right-hand man. If you're unhappy, if you're in an unhappy marriage, they will have a plan ready to replace your spouse. 
What you might not notice until later is that these plans always seem to involve some sort of sacrifice on your end, not theirs. Do you resonate with this at all? Of tapping into the hopes and dreams, y'all connecting in that aspect. That is a huge one. The second one I want to bring up is we share the same insecurities. And this one's interesting because a lot of times you don't think about a narcissist being insecure or a toxic person being insecure, but this is how oftentimes they connect. A lot of times this is a way to be able to show fake vulnerability where the narcissist will bring up things in the past that resonate so much with you that it connects you. It bonds you together and you're like, wait a second, this is exactly what I'm thinking. This is exactly what I'm looking for. As a result, I know how to give this person love. I know how to care that, care for this person. I know how to connect with this person because it's the exact same thing that I'm struggling with. See a pattern so far? The psychopath will never actually mention your vulnerabilities, but they can sniff them out in a second. They will, then they will mirror your insecurities to drive up your sympathy so that you might attempt to heal their problems with the same care you might hope to receive for yourself. This one is incredibly toxic because the narcissist not only sees you have vulnerabilities, not only sees there are different instances of things that are wounds or holes into what is actually going on in your life, but then they start to capitalize on them. They start to use them and evolve with them to be able to have you understand, I have those same things, therefore love me with the void that you have in your life. It's very toxic because it pulls more out of you. It, it consumes more of your soul, more of your personality, and you get lost in this. As an empathetic person, you are naturally drawn to offer comfort to people who are hurting or vulnerable. This inclination to comfort increases when you also recognize someone else's insecurities as your own. You see someone feeling inferior, and you believe that you know how to make them feel better. This oftentimes is where we fall into the trap of someone trying to fix a narcissist, of trying to fix the things that they're going through because they're like, but I realize that they're hurting. I realize that all these things are happening and I like connect with that. A lot of times they know. A lot of times that's the reason why they even brought that up. Because that reason didn't exist in the previous relationship. That reason won't exist in the future relationship because it's used to manipulate in a facade to be able to control you, to be able to control the situation. You can't fix a narcissist. You can't push them to do what you want them to do. You can't make them change. You can't make them get into therapy. You can't force these things. The psychopath seems to genuinely adore all of your efforts. They compare you to their exes, idealizing you above everyone else. They praise your caring nature, which makes you want to do more for them. You feel like all of your efforts are appreciated and you want to do even more to prove how much you care. You see their insecurities and perceive them as genuine, open, vulnerable, and sympathetic. Someone you want to help. Psychopaths see insecurities in a different way. As a tool for manipulation and control. They see it as a weakness that you have that they can exploit and that they can use. And at the same time, narcissists view those vulnerabilities for themselves as being weakness, which is why they're not going to open up. Now, sometimes you can see this aspect of having fake vulnerability, where narcissists will have something that's happened or pretend that something's happened in their past, in their childhood, and then use that as kind of like a shock factor of like, yes, I was abused in this way. And you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. Let me, let me take care of you. And a majority of time, those tactics are used in a way to be able to elicit an emotional response from you and make you think that they're vulnerable. Make you think that there's something there with the emotion and sympathy when actually there's not a vulnerability there. It's a fake vulnerability. You need to understand that a narcissist being vulnerable in the past does not mean that they're being vulnerable in the present. How are they being vulnerable now? By being honest with you by connecting with you, by, by opening up about what they're feeling, their emotions, like what they're actually struggling with, like all the things that are happening in the moment. You won't see narcissists do that. They'll only focus on the past. Well, they'll only focus on dumping stuff on you to be able to traumatize you, to be able to get you to react, not actually being open, honest, vulnerable, and showing consistent change. If you don't have that in your relationship, you don't have a relationship. You don't have a connection with someone. What you have is just a piece of a person. 
But without actually knowing the whole picture, without actually understanding that person, you don't have someone to connect with, to love, to be able to work with on a deeper level. You have a fiction. You have a fantasy. You have a facade. If you're struggling figuring out, am I actually in this? Is this what I'm going through? Am I a narcissist? Is he a narcissist? Have I been doing reactive abuse? What does the guilt and shame look like? Why am I still feeling this way over after so many months or years? Go to escapetoxicity.com today. You can click on the link down below. You can access that to be able to see there is a way to get free. It's a $7 challenge for seven days. Technically, there's nine because there's an intro and a conclusion. But to be able to help you understand and to wrap your mind around the craziness that's been happening, this is the first step in your healing process. To be able to understand what's going on, then to be able to move to help you rewire the story that you believe, to be able to change your perspective, the dynamic that keeps sucking you back into this toxic relationship or keeps you in a cycle of going from toxic person over and over and over again. So when you're sitting here, have you been groomed? Is it something that you've seen in your life that they're molding and modifying you to get molded into the way that they want you to be? If so, it's time to get free. Go to escapetoxicity.com today to start your healing journey.